Hello, my name is Fred Banzer. I'm a software developer at Mathrix, and today I will be demonstrating how to model input events within Simulink. This will not only allow for your models to be able to react to incoming data, but it'll also allow you to be able to detect faults with source data if it's not getting updated appropriately. And so with that, uh, let's jump straight into the demo. Starting with a model that has an import we would like to trigger off of, we first have to define a partition to execute when a port is written to. To do this, we create a subsystem and configure it to be an APR partition named logic. This will act as an entry point that will get executed whenever its associated event is triggered. Next, we will add some elements to execute within the partition. For this demo, we are simply forwarding the receive message to outport 1. Additionally, the partition will send a constant message to outport 2. This is so we can easily observe when the logic partition executes. After defining the partition and wiring it to the outports, we now need to configure our input port to raise the event when data is written to it. To do this, we can open the input port blocks dialog and navigate to the new execution tab. From here, we can add an input write trigger and set the event we would like to raise. For now, we will leave this as auto, which will generate a new event for us when we update the model. After updating the model, we can see the scheduled connector indicating that the new event, M1 input write, is set to execute the logic partition. This can also be observed in the schedule editor. We can open the schedule editor window by clicking on the subsystem's partition badge. In the schedule view, we can then see that the log logic partition will get triggered by in1.inputwrite. At this point, the model's partition is now set up to execute whenever data is written to input port 1 for the model. To simulate the event triggering behavior, I have referenced the previous model that we just created into a composition model and named it sync. This pair model will drive the logic partition by writing to the queue block from an aperiodic source. The source is set up to sample a sine wave and write to the sync model's input at random intervals. To make it even more interesting, the source will also periodically sample the data twice during a given step. Let's run the model. We can see from the two scopes in the model that each time the data was sampled, indicated by the red data points, the logic partition was executed and produced and the expected output, shown by the blue colored data. We can also see how data is flowing through our model via the sequence viewer. During the sample phase, we can see that as data is sent to the sync model, the logic partition reacts within the same time step, even though the sampling is varied. However, there is a problem. In the case where we're sampling multiple times within a single time step, we can see some data loss occurring. This is because the message queue is overflowing. There are several ways to resolve this. One way is to update the queue to contain more samples. Another way is to alter the scheduling priority between the sensor and logic partition. To do this, we can open the schedule editor in the composition and look in at the execution order. We can see that when we previously ran, the sensor's partition was, high, was a higher priority than the logic partition. This prevented the logic partition from reading the samples immediately from the queue. To fix the data loss issue, we can switch these two partitions on the exact order list. This will allow the logic partition to preempt or interrupt the sensor in order to process data as it comes in. Running this model again, we now see that all the samples in the multi-send case are handled immediately, leading to no data loss within our system. In addition to scheduling on input writes, we can also schedule partitions to run when there is a lack of input. This can be useful for detecting things like stale signal data or disconnected sensors and allow for some corrective action to take place within our models. These types of event triggers that detect faults in data flow are sometimes referred to as quality of service, or QoS. From our original model, we now added two new subsystems, a switch and a new partition named corrective action. This will handle the output when there is a significant gap between input writes. 
The logic partition was also updated, so its import is now a signal. The reason for this change is to demonstrate how the input event triggers can be applied to incoming data regardless of whether the input values are buffered, as shown in this current model, or, as with the previous demo, um, queued through Simulink messages. When executed, the corrective action partition will switch the output to a ground value when the timeout occurs. In practice, corrective measures can vary depending on the use case, such as switching to a backup sensor or extrapolating the output based on previous data. In this case, we're zeroing out the data. Similar to the previous demo, we will also publish a constant message. This is so we can easily observe the times when each partition is executed. With our partitions defined, the next step is to set up the timeout trigger on the import. To do this, we can navigate back to the Imports Execution tab and create a new trigger, Input Write Timeout. In this case, we'll specify a timeout of one second. For the timeout event, instead of using the auto-generated event, we can instead specify a user-defined event. To do this, we can navigate to the Schedule Editor window and create an event in the Events pane. Once created, we now need to bind it to the Corrective Action Partition. This can be done by simply dragging the event onto the partition in the schedule view. With the custom event configured, we can now select it in the event dropdown for the input write timeout. The model is now ready to be simulated for timeout events. To simulate the timeout effects, we also modified our composition model. The sensor model now has an on-off switch and new sampling logic. Looking at the sampling logic, we are still sampling at a variable rate but we now have a new off state. This new state prevents the sensor from producing new samples and acts as if the sensor is disconnected from the system. This should lead to a timeout event occurring in our sync model. We are now going to run the model in a paste mode. While the sensor is on the on state, we should see a sine wave of amplitude two in the right graph. When we switch the sensor off, we should see the signal go to zero after the one second timeout duration is exceeded. Looking at the hit time plot on the left, we should also see the graph switch from executing the logic partition in blue to the corrective action partition in orange. Additionally, the corrective action partition will repeatedly execute at the timeout interval until the sensor starts to produce data again. In summary, this has been a quick tutorial on how you can easily use input events to schedule and simulate data flow and quality of service within a Simulink model. Thanks for watching.